Hello, it's Jimmy at Aero O'Reilly's. I'm looking at a Ford Galaxy. I think we're, some of you are probably gonna already know what the story is here, but uh, slightly different on this one, a little bit different. So we've got engine service now message. And have a look at the fault codes using the launch Euro Tab 3 scan tool. P244C, exhaust temperature too low, and particle filter efficiency P002. So I've already taken the vehicle for a drive. Um, all of these temperatures here are reaching where I wanted them to be, 90 degrees. And these were coming over sort of 200 degrees here. Okay, what have we got a problem here? Differential pressure, minus 30. Sucked loading, 235% and that's about it so what's going on here i'll tell you a little bit of a story about the vehicle uh, it's been to four mechanics one guy has done a forced regeneration on the dpf uh it didn't work second guy has changed some sensors a uh, differential pressure sensor now that's on minus 30 so we're going to check why that's reading minus 30 after it's had a new dpf pressure sensor uh, the third guy said, you know, bring it to me, we'll do it properly, have the DPF taken off. Take off the DPF and put it on a big massive machine and clean it properly. Now the first guy, one guy was a mobile, one guy was a normal mechanic. Uh, the other guy was in a big shed with a DPF cleaning machine. Uh, cleaned the DPF three miles from the garage, the worn light came back on. Um, now he's come to me to try and get to the bottom of the issue. So that shouldn't be reading minus 30, that's one issue. And then we have this one. Temperature too low. Now I think most people know what the issue for that is, but I'll show you as we go through the video. It's gonna be the vaporizer unit, and I'll show you why it is the vaporizer. And I'm gonna show you, hopefully, why they, um, Differential pressure sensor is reading minus 30. Uh, I'll already have that look, so I do know I do know why, why it's why it's doing it, but uh, I'll show you. Okay, so here we have the DPF pressure hoses, and they run up there. Where someone's put a new sensor on it to try and resolve his issue, which was an incorrect diagnosis anyway. But they've obviously put these tubes on the wrong way around. So let me just swap them around. And then we'll go back in and read the live data again. Okay, so just up there, that's the sensor there. Right, now let's go back to the data stream, or live data. And we'll find the differential pressure. And there you go, that's, that's, that's that problem solved. They've obviously fitted the pressure sensor incorrectly. Now we can rev up the car around 3000 rpm and have a look at the pressure Two hundred and seventy millibars we'll put that on a graph sorry I'm getting a bit of reflection on the screen there okay so that's that problem that's sorted out the differential pressure sensor and we will now um, sort out the vaporizer unit. And you see that closed loop one? That's why that's on zero because the sensors were flipped. So it's reading a negative pressure which is thinking that the DPF is too clean, of course it's not. But the open loop there is still at 235%. Now once I have this DPF working correctly, we'll see that come down on its own accord. You can't reset this one, you can reset this. And um, we'll see this all sort of come back to where it should be soon. So I'm just spraying up the vaporizer there. Just trying, we're gonna get that loose. Just using some uh, lube. Now get the flow uh, torch on it. Just gonna get the base of the vaporizer here, red hot. Now 
then with a 22 mil spinner as long as you've had all your spinach you can then crack it loose just gonna cool that sensor vaporizer down spray a little bit of water on it oh, sorry it seems if I close down the bonnet there I can see a lot clearer sunlight's coming in so now we should just be able to get that undone by hand let's wear a nice uh, heat proof glove of course and pull that out and she is smoking now sometimes by putting that heat on there you can get these stone block but uh, if a customer's coming from far away, I'd rather just order the part and have it ready to fit. Okay, that's the vaporizer out. So we've got a new vaporizer there. And of course, just line them up to make sure that they are the same size. And now we'll use the midi back here to use the to test how much pressure is on the vaporizer. It's coming down, but slowly. Now we're on the new vaporizer. No pressure. So what that does is that injects fuel into the DPF system. Um, now this is not a high pressure system. It's a very low pressure little tiny little fuel pump that squirts the fuel in. And what will happen is either it, it there's not a lot of pressure so it'll try and push the fuel out and if there's any sort of blockage the fuel just won't come out or if there's a minor blockage the fuel will come out but only a very minor amount so not enough to get the temperature hot enough to where it needs to be um, now you can clean these um, you can you can clean them sometimes but um, I've had a couple where they weren't successful sometimes you can get them successful by putting a blowtorch on them get it red hot and connect an airline to this end just to blow through and if you want to look at how you can do that, I have videos on my channel uh, repairing a vaporizer. So, new vaporizer is in. 22 mil spanner again to tighten it up. A few lines just connect straight to there. It's just clip and clip, push them back together. And that's it, as simple as that. So now we can just put back on this little brace here and tighten it back up. Retrieve my socket back from there. And then we can uh, get this tightened back up. So just by removing that little brace there, it makes it easier to get your hand in there to work on the vaporizer unit. Okay, now the vaporizer is in, we just need to get it primed up. That's going to be done in special functions. Sorry, just get the uh, screen down level for you there. Uh, PCM power control module service functions. And we'll go to fuel vaporizer system prime. Uh, okay, that didn't work. So what I might need to do just to get the vaporizer primed up and make sure that the vaporizer fuel pump is working is just for for maybe 10 seconds just set off a uh, uh, forced regen and then cancel it uh, where are we reset part there we go static regeneration okay that's done we can hear that the fuel pump's working you can hear it buzzing you can hear like a Taking noise and you can go underneath and feel it. You can feel the, the vaporizer fuel pump uh, pulsing Now What some people do ask me to do on this and I hate having to um, you know give people the, the scare tactic but uh, I had a couple of customers recently and they said look can we just fit the vaporizer uh, and then let the car try and do its own regeneration um, and Again, it does it, it can cause issues uh, here the vaporizer has been fitted now and you take it around the block the car cuts out what happens is once the, the pressure gets high in the DPF too high to clean basically um, to clean manually um, the higher the, the pressure is the more heat it generates uh, once the heat gets too high the car will cut out and do uh, what's called a thermal cutout 
Um, it then won't allow you to restart the car for at least an hour. Um, last customer asked me to do this. Oh, I just want to fit the vaporizer and then I'll take it for a drive and see if the if dash if the soot levels come down on their own. If not, then I'll I'll maybe go to clean. Now he made it five four or five miles up the um, A one M and then and then really annoyingly called me back. Oh, I'm broke down on the A one M. The car's cut out and I said I did warn you. I did warn you. Um, and he said, oh, you should have made it more clear. I didn't realize it actually meant you know that it would actually do this to me. Um, but yeah so he stopped at a service station luckily it was at a service station he stopped at a service station the car then wouldn't uh, cut out wouldn't restart um, and then annoyingly I had to go there to try and help him to reset it um, but it doesn't always work you can sometimes reset the exhaust gas temperature sensor it doesn't always work it's just um, way safer to uh, to just clean your DPF and you don't risk overheating it and damaging it now again like I said with this guy he has had people do forced regenerations uh, and guess what they didn't change his engine oil so I'm going to use this um, cleaning gun it's a launch DPF cleaner and we've got here a bottle of the cleaning fluid we're going to get that filled up in here now the way I like to do this is about 50% of this fluid and 50% of water now if we look under here here's the DPF looks like they've done a nice job of spraying it up so this tube here we're going to follow it back and this is where we're going to put the cleaning fluid in. Connect in our holes here from the gun. We've got this one disconnected. Now, to me, it's pretty amazing, really, that people have... He's brought this back, like, this guy is taking this DPF off, give it a nice spray up, put it in a machine, cleaned it, put it all back together, and didn't realise that the pipes are on the wrong way around. And the first guy fitted the sensor. He fitted the sensor the wrong way around. Okay, one guy's fitted the sensor incorrectly. It's been to another guy. He's took it off, put it on a cleaning machine. He's got a DPF cleaner. Um, put it all back together. Still didn't realise that the DPF um, is on incorrectly because it's getting negative readings. They put a new pressure sensor on it and other stuff. Just a lot of messing around. Uh, it just seems like nobody seems to know how these things actually work. So sorry, I'm just out from the car here now. I'll give you a little bit of a better angle. Can't really get a good angle on it when I'm squashed in there. But that's the DPF. You can see they've taken it off, sprayed it up. Um, multiple visits to the garage. Like they've, they've, he's had a guy out that cleaned it on the car mobile. Uh, another guy at, the, at his normal garage replaced the pressure sensor and done a fourth region. That didn't work. He's taken it to another guy. He's taken off the DPF. I can clean it properly, he said. Put it on my machine and we do it properly. Uh, three miles down the road, it broke down. Well, the light came on. Um, that didn't work. And the guy said, well, you don't know what's wrong with it. For one, the sensor, differential pressure sensor was fitted incorrectly and the vapors was not working. So we're ready to spray the cleaning fluid in now. That's just going straight into the DPF. Now, I think launch say to do this in five second bursts, but I've always done it this way. One continuous burst, fill the DPF up as much as you can. So the way I'm thinking is doing it like that, it's gonna force its way through the through the filter um, and get that all, all softened down. Then when we start the car, it's gonna blow it all out and it'll all be fine. Now you remember I said he's uh, he's been back to the guys four or five times and he's telling me this is what's happened. Uh, they've messed around with it. They've turned the light off. Uh, two or three miles down the road, it's come back. So he's been back to the guy who cleaned it. Um, yeah, pressed a few things. It's all fixed. Um, and again, like I showed you on another video, you reset the values. You drive the car for four or five miles. Those values creep back up. And then ping, your, your light comes back on. So let's get this... DPF pressure on the graph, hold the revs up, just over 3000 RPM, a little bit above it if we can, sorry let me just get that steady, got a few little spike revs there as well, now we should see that pressure dropping, give it a couple of minutes just to work its way in.
So I've let that rest in the DPF for around about 10 minutes. I get asked that question a lot, so yeah, might as well answer that for you now. Sorry, the revs are creeping up there. So once we get this down low enough, the car will then it'll then be safe in a safe sort of level to clean its own DPF again. Um, it's just when the pressure is high, you know, you're spiking up to 400 millibars there while we were revving it before, and you try and do a forced regen, then you're going to overheat the DPF. You get the, the pressure down nice and low, it's very safe, and just a, a better way to do it, way better way to do it. Wish people would just stop chucking forced regions on everything. When you, they come in with a DPF, um, my DPS blocks, yeah, that's all right, let's clean it, or let's, let's stick it on a forced regen without even, you know, trying to trying to find the problem. Sorry, the revs keep sort of jumping up. Try and get that steady. So that's it, we're down around 40, 50 millibars, we'll let it idle. Now what I don't like to see is on these Fords, is I don't like to see them coming down to zero. I know zero is usually good, it depends on the car, but these Fords, they don't, they, they only usually come to zero if there's damage on the on the particle filter. See, there should be some resistance, a tiny amount of resistance, not zero, should be sort of, you know, some two millibars to five or six millibars. When it's down to zero, it's a bit, little bit suspicious, but uh, we'll see if that creeps back up a little bit in a minute. So now if we spike the revs all the way up, Getting up to around about 120 max. So this vehicle now, 3,000 RPM. We have 70 to 80 millibars, which is just is you'd expect it to be there. Um, idle. We are getting zero, which is yeah, it's a bit does measures now to me don't really add up because if we're getting 80 on 3000 it's expected to see sort of 5 to 10 on idle but uh, the, the sensor sometimes can play up a little bit until the um, steam of the the cleaner has uh, worked its way out you can see there we, we still have, have some steam we're not completely finished yet okay so it looks like it's evened itself out a bit now it's coming back up to around 10 and you can see now the soot percentage has sort of come back up a little bit so you know that the differential pressure sensor is working. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change his engine oil, but I'll skip this bit. I don't want to bore you too much. And out she comes. That oil is a weird, weird colour. There's like a green tint on it. I don't know if you can see. So we're taking it on a test drive. Haven't reset anything yet. Just making sure that the DPF pressure is coming up. So that will come up until this uh, open loop here comes down. So you can see now that that's all coming down on its own accord. We haven't done anything to reset it. We haven't done any forced regens. That will just work on its own now. Obviously we've, we've flushed down the DPF to get the pressure down, so. Okay, now that process has finished. You can see the temperature coming down and the percentages have dropped. Okay, now it's all done. I'll just reset the particle filter values. Read the faults. Just confirm that there's none. Now both of the percentages are down to 0%. So that's it. We are all finished on the S-Max, sorry, Galaxy. See you in the next video.